What's up, guys? This is Keith Kelfis with the Untrapped Podcast. We have a, a, an amazing guest for you today. You're going to want to tune out anything else that you're doing because we have Miles Beckler on the show right now. Here's a guy who he runs a very successful internet business. He's a Facebook ads and marketing genius. He's spoken literally all over the world on stages. He's a sought after speaker and entrepreneur. He is went from zero to 75,000 YouTube subscribers in just over two years by putting out consistent high quality content. And he's just dominating his entire uh, area on YouTube right now. Nobody can fuck with him. And I'll tell you why he's putting out <laughs> here. Here's a guy who's built an entire business before he started posting on social media, right? He did the real thing and now he's talking about it. So I'm, I'm all, okay. I'm an open book, man. I'm easy. Okay. I'm an open book. This is how I roll. Okay. So the one thing I like most about Miles is his ability to be focused. He's a meditator. This guy meditates every single day. And what's up, Miles Beckler? What's up, man? Thanks for having me. Good to good to connect, get to share some some valid some value, some knowledge bombs. <laughs> <laughs> so you're doing well, man. Yeah, dude. Life's good. Life's good. Kind of staying focused on, you know, being of service to others. What can I do in this world? Make the world a little better place. And um, I'm all about sharing this. This marketing, I think. I think we all need to create our own little micro economies right now. Um, you can see it globally. You can see it micro, macro economics. Like things are going crazy. Um, and I think the real solution is, you know, entrepreneurship, um, kind of doing our own things, creating our own little micro economies. You obviously get that. And uh, I'm just, I'm stoked to connect, man. Absolutely, man. So there's so many directions we can go in, but I, I want to, I want you to talk about. There's so much noise on social media, and as we get into 2020 there's so much fucking information everywhere that you can literally just uh, become paralyzed by it and one thing one underlying tone of your content on the miles beckler youtube channel is you know how to direct your energy and focus it like a laser beam to get specific results and yeah, you have to so, so like, I'll just, yeah, let me jump on that because like, so you use a laser beam idea and, and one of the analogies I use a lot is, um, you know, you've got the sun above your head and then you got a magnifying glass in your hand. And if you keep moving that magnifying glass around, you're never going to like, nothing's going to combust. But if you hold that steady and it takes some adjusting, right? It ain't the first place you put it out. It works. Like you get that, that focus just perfect. And then you hold it steady for long enough. You will create combustion in that moment in time. And that's what we're all shooting for in, in some unique areas. And I don't care if you're trying to like lose weight or if you're trying to grow a business online, like you're, you're trying to get to that point of like, you know, proverbial combustion. And I, I really think that's just a good analogy to run with because our energy is everything. What we focus on is everything. And there's so much noise. There's more distractions than ever before. You're seeing more advertisements than ever before. Uh, the pop-up notifications, the social media, the this, the that, just not to mention like everyday life is busier than ever before. Um, yet, like being busier and doing more and wasting more time isn't actually the answer. That doesn't lead us to fulfillment. So it's this weird like paradox and there's so many paradoxes in life. Like you get that, right? Like, and it's just, I don't know, it's fun to, to play with, but um, man, energy management, I think is like the number one thing for people to really work on. Energy management. Now uh, listen when Miles talks because you built a business from zero you took off a little too fast. You failed initially. You went back to the drawing board and now you have a multiple six figure business. I mean, uh, if you feel comfortable talking about the numbers or just talking about how much you spend on freaking Facebook ads and yeah. talk about that and talk about what your business actually is, what's your, your mission and your goal. So let's go back to that first one that flopped because, um, you know, man, nobody, nobody who's made it quote unquote is really comes from a position of getting it right the first time. So I started kind of doing affiliate marketing through MySpace back in 2003. So that was about 15 years ago at this point. And that all came crashing down because I wasn't adding value to anybody's life. I wasn't growing an email list. I wasn't really building a business. I had figured out a way to kind of like direct link people from over here to an affiliate product over there. So I learned the hard way, the wrong way to do it. So what's the right way? Well, you create valuable content for people. You become a publishing partner for the platforms, whether that's like, you know, through your blog on Google, through videos on YouTube, through podcasts for the iTunes directory, et cetera. You become through great content, you become a publishing partner. Then you grow an email list. And then ultimately you figure out what these people that you're kind of connecting with, what they want. What do they want out of life? What do they want? 
What problems do they want to solve? And then you literally go create those things that they want, right? Like they will tell you if you ask them. Um, so my wife and I started a business. We co-founded it back in 2009. Um, it's an extremely lucrative business at this point. It's brought in a couple of million dollars in revenue for us and it's 100% digital. We've lived in about 20 countries. Um, we're full-time nomads for four years. So it's not just the financial freedom, but that, that total like time and location independence is almost more of what I personally value. Um, I'm, I'm pretty aggressive in the Facebook ads still. I run a lot of advertising on Facebook and I do, we get more traffic from Google from all our um, kind of content marketing and our blogging that we've done through the years. But uh, I've probably spent about $200,000 on Facebook ads, um, probably generated $200,000, $250,000. But um, my Facebook ads are only designed to bring me new customers for free. And then it grows my list. And we've got a list of like 150,000 active subscribers on that brand. Um, and that's kind of the short of it. I started teaching internet marketing, what we've been doing to grow that business in 2016. Keith, that's how you and I connected. You found my videos. And, um, so I just kind of started sharing for free everything that we're doing. Cause I felt there were too many chumps out there trying to sell the how to, and they weren't even as good as I was. And it would like, it would make me angry and frustrated. And I was like, fine, I just, I guess I just need to step up and do the work and put out the content. And now I'm 28 months in of putting out, um, you know, about 450 videos in 28 months, just super tactical stuff, super nuts and bolts, how to build a funnel, how to run Facebook ads, how to do SEO. And, um, that's growing really quickly as well. So now I got kind of like two businesses again. Uh, guys. And if you want to learn, say just for example, of the many things miles teaches, um, go on miles Beckler, just like it's spelt, like you say it on his YouTube channel, shut off everything around you get a cup of coffee and sit there for 45 minutes and he will teach you step-by-step step how to run Facebook ads down to the nuts and bolts details. Um, I even have a, a buddy who says, man, you recommended me to that Miles Beckler guy. He's like, but I couldn't listen to him. He's like, that Miles Beckler guy is so smart and so in depth. I said, that's because you're trying to listen to him while you're doing 50 other things. Now yeah. you, you have a podcast as well that people can listen to, but yep. I'm talking about if you take the time and buckle down and listen to what he's saying, he'll teach you more than 90% of the people out there because you've actually built a, a legitimate business and you do this every day. And I also right. like how you don't have anything for sale. You're not pitching anybody anything. Right. And so, There's too many people out there who like they learn Facebook ads to run Facebook ads to sell their Facebook ads course. And they really have no business other than that little kind of incestuous. I mean, that's incest, right? Like that's a form of incest. So what I've done is I have a successful business with my wife. We have a very large audience that we're of service to there. And I'm just teaching what works for me. So, and you know, one of the things I do on YouTube is I show my screen. So I'm literally showing you step-by-step, step, click here, click here, click here. And then Facebook changes the ad interface, for example. And then I make another video. I think I've made five videos of the different interfaces that Facebook has changed along the ways. And then on my podcast, you get the mindset stuff um, where I'm just kind of ranting a little bit. Um, it's just what I call my talking head videos. Uh, a lot of the mindset stuff, because what's funny, so many of my most popular videos are tactical videos where I show you exactly what to do, which is great. We all need to know the tactics, but in my personal opinion, it's the mindset stuff. It's the strategy. It's the goals. It's, it's, it's the mindset. That's, that's what really makes the game. And those videos don't get as many views, which is kind of funny, but that's again, the irony of life. Um, and those are all my podcast and, um, I'm the only miles Beckler in the world. So I'm pretty easy to find, but, um, yeah, awesome. cheers, man. Glad you like I, the content. I do have the perfect question for you because most of the people who watch my videos and you guys are small business owners, you run actual real service businesses, you're doing landscaping, uh, cleaning windows, you're out there doing pressure washing jobs, installing hardscapes, and you're like, well, this is great, but how do I market my business so I can get yeah. checks in the mail, real customers to sign on the dotted line? So if you want to learn how to market your business and get more focused, especially in 2019, um, Miles, talk a little bit about about that because yeah. sometimes I look at my phone, I'm subscribed to all your emails and stuff. I'm like, how the fuck is this guy doing huh. this? It, like, it can get overwhelming for sure, you, right? You, like Your level of consistency and consistently putting out amazing content, like you'll be like Miles, uh, badass, Beckler, and you, you do these things, but you, you're talking about real things, but you're putting out so much consistent content that it's just like a buzz. How are you doing that? And how can somebody who's busy running a business already start to implement these strategies or maybe hire VAs? How can they get this going so they get their own marketing system that doesn't go like this, but it's consistent? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
Totally. And, and I'll, I'll give you like a perfect plan for 2019 coming out of the gates, so, but real quick. So how I accomplish it. Um, I feel like I started a race late and there are some people who don't have, uh, your best, uh, intention. They don't have very good intentions, right? They're, they're greedy flat out. There are some very greedy people selling these really expensive courses that don't really cover everything. And like the $2,000 course for an internet marketing course is kind of normal. And I think that's, pretty shady. I think that's getting down the path of like sociopath and sociopathy. Um, there's some really weird people doing weird things. So that goes back to why I'm so aggressive with my pace of publishing is they started four or five years before I did. So I, I, they got the head start and I'm playing catch up to them. So I am extremely aggressive with my publishing schedule. You as a business owner might not need to be, you could probably be extremely strategic in one or two areas and that's it, right? You unlock the right one or two kind of connections with the right platforms that have the attention of your perfect potential customers, that's really all you need to unlock. So the first question is, where are your perfect potential customers? Are they on Google? Are they searching for things like, who can I get to come clean my windows, like landscaping, who can come take down this tree that fell down, right? Like what phrases are they searching? Are they on Google? Or are they, are you selling something that's more of a want, right? Is it a need or is it a want? Because in that moment, if you're a plumber, for example, and your potential client's water heater explodes and they now have water filling up their house, like they're not going to go to Facebook and hope that they see an ad for a plumber. They're going straight to Google on their cell phone. They're typing in plumber. They might say 24 seven. They might say their town name. They might not, but they're just going to search for a plumber. And if you show up and you're a plumber, you're going to probably get that job. Just the fact that you show up with a phone number and you get the phone call. So how do you get there? How do you get on that? Well, Google's really simple to work with for a small business. There's something called the Google My Business platform and it's google.com forward slash business and you can set up a free account where you claim your listing and you essentially need to give them your business name, your business address, your business phone number and then they mail you a postcard in the mail. It takes like 10 days to get this postcard. Then you log back in. On that postcard, it's got a four digit number like 6421 or something that's unique to you. What they're doing is they're verifying that you actually have a physical address and they want to know exactly where you are in that city. So if you're in Springfield, Missouri, they want to know literally exactly where your address is. So when a user is on their cell phone within a mile radius or a three mile radius of you and they search for your service, they have already verified that you physically are in that area. When you've done that and you've made that connection, you show up on the map. There's only three people who show up on the map. If you show up, that means 90 plus percent of your competitors aren't showing up and you only have two other people showing up right there. So that's, that's like the huge leap that every small business must do today. Again, it's Google My Business. It's google.com forward slash business. It's 100% free. You could do it yourself. And then you just got to make sure you use the one phone number on your website, same phone number on the Google My Business, same with your address. Um, from there, go claim your Yelp page, go claim your TripAdvisor page if you have one, uh, your yellow pages or your white pages, pages, those little other things where people rate you, go actually claim them, own them, put in the same phone number and the same address. And you just reinforce to Google that I'm real, I do this service and I'm located on this block. And Google knows, Google's tracking every single one of us, right, on our cell phone. Google knows every moment when you're searching exactly where you are in your city. And they always wanna try to bring you somebody who's really close by. So that's to me, that's the big thing. And like 50% of businesses don't have that set up yet. Ah, yeah. Consistent, relevant information all the way across the board. Get inside of Google's three pack, the top three yep. listings, tons of positive reviews. Uh, so another thing I want to ask you is you, list building. So businesses uh, eat by building lists of customers and clients that they remarket their services to over and over again, and they right. build relationships. Now there's this, this trend. It's different now that you can acquire a customer, whether it's a uh, free or paid or organic or through uh, ad, but on the, the front end, uh, you pay to attract and acquire that customer. You do right. work for them or not, but on the back end, you, you market to them with emails, right? And you follow up with that customer or retargeting. So what a lot of small business owners don't understand that one, uh, cause you've, you're a master of this. You have literally how many email addresses? 154,000 or so. Like, I don't even have to finish my question. Can you talk about that a little bit? So small business owners go, oh, yeah. 
Well, so the, the first big distinction is that you actually make your money on the back end, right? Like, and what that means is that first sale with a customer is not actually where you're supposed to make all of your profits. It's good if you can be profitable on your first sale. Um, my wife and I, with our Facebook ads, we will often be maybe cash flow negative a little bit on that first sale. But there's this metric within your business that's called the lifetime value of your customer. So it, and every business is different, right? So like a general contractor may show up to do a, uh, let's say a fireplace remodel job. They're gonna take out the old brick fireplace and they're gonna put this stacked rock in, they're gonna make it look nice and pimping, right? So that's the first job and the customers love it. They do a great job, they're clean, the people show up on time, it's done on time. Perfect, that's just the first job. Who are they gonna call when they're ready to redo their kitchen? What about them two bathrooms they got? What about the backyard when they wanna build that out with the, the barbecue and the outdoor fireplace, right? If you're intelligent about how you treat your past customers, about staying in touch with people and being no, like a normal human being, right? Building an actual relationship with those people, when it's time for them to drop 30, 40 grand in the kitchen, you get that job. When it's time for them to drop 12 grand on the backyard because you know daddy just got a bonus, you get that job. But you're not gonna get that job if you don't stay top of mind, if you don't give them value, if you don't make them feel appreciated. Uh, email works, but like for a lot of real businesses, I still send like actual greeting cards. I actually send my own vendors. I'm total digital business. I send thank you cards, like actual handwritten thank you cards because it stands out. Nobody does that, right? And I want my vendors and the people I rely on to know how much I appreciate them. Sure, I pay their bill on time. That's one way of doing it. But I send them like a, a box of brownies and like a thank you card sometimes just to really establish and build those relationships. So you need to think about your business model and you really need to think of kind of your customer ascension path, right? So I think that another variation of this business model is the, the ongoing monthly services, whether it's like the window cleaning kind of service-based thing or like lawn care, yard care, landscaping. There's a lot of those jobs that you're only making X, Y, Z per month. But if you keep that customer for four years, like that could be an 8,000, 10,000, 15,000. That could be a very, very, very large customer. And when you stack up these cash flows and you stack up these kinds of ongoing recurring payments, ooh, that's how you can get a lifestyle business that can give you a lot of freedom because you put the right people in place and boom, 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 right? That, that's kind of developing the business. But it's really thinking about every single potential prospect as not only like a job, but like there's a lifetime value there in that relationship. So then what are the different ways you can give value? What are the different things you can offer? Um, email is not only a tool for you to send pitches, for you to send like, hey, buy my stuff, hey, buy my stuff, right? Sometimes the, the general contractor could do uh, a free series on like a DIY backyard remodel. And you might be like, well, why would they teach them how to do it? Number one, because they're experts. Number two, we like to do business with people we know, like, and trust. So it's a way for you to give value to help them kind of know who you are, stay in touch. And most people are too busy. They're just not gonna do it. They're gonna look at it. They're gonna be like, oh, that looks really cool. Uh, they'll reply, how much for you guys to come in and do that? I don't have time, but I want the result, right? So it's, it's thinking about those kinds of things that you can kind of um, create through content to share with your clients and your customers to help them remember who you are, to stay top of mind, but also to give value to them. And it, it varies for every business, for sure. So this is, this is uh, in past tense now already like an emergency to be competitive, yeah. You had to be extremely, extremely your competitors are doing this. Like the really good competitors in your neighborhood, in your industry, they're all doing this. And if you're not like the world is quickly, quickly, quickly changing. Um, and those who give value through content are winning. Those who are sitting on their hands, wondering why the phone isn't calling they're losing. And, and yeah. this is the direction. And Keith, you're, you're such a great example of how you do what you do. Cause I know a lot, like you obviously have one side to your platform and your business of other individuals who run similar types of businesses, right? Your peers. But I know for a fact that your clients and like your actual customers, they cyber stalk you, right? They're gonna be like, Oh, they're going to look for reviews. This, that they're going to find your, your videos. They're going to look back and be like, damn, this dude's been, wow. He's been on it for a while. They'll watch one or two videos. It's just a credibility factor is, is what it is for a lot of people. And they they can see that you know your stuff because you know you do your time lapse where you're taking down that big old tree next to that really really old vintage house and and like you, you know they they can actually watch you do your craft it makes them feel like you're the right guy for them versus you know whatever shows up on Yelp or you know dude they're seeing results in advance bingo awesome. perfect <laughs> what are you drinking man 
lemon water. Um, I just put lemon juice in the water. I drink it all day long. Nice and alkaline gives me something kind of, um, I don't know. I love it. Dude. So you drink alkaline water, you eat healthy, yep. you meditate. Do, do yep. you ever have a cheat day? Um, depends on what you consider a cheat day. I mean, I haven't had alcohol in over two years at this point and, um, I'm totally cool with that. Um, haven't, I don't, I don't really ingest any like toxins or anything. Um, or I try not to, but like, um, vegan wife makes vegan pizza every once in a while, but it doesn't even have cheese on it. It's like a cashew cheese. So, but yeah, like, I don't know, popcorn and chocolate. <laughs> like for yeah. sure. I'm, I'm human for sure. Right. But, um, it's, I, I said energy management earlier, like what are we consuming is, you know, what you put in garbage in garbage out straight up. So if you put in really good stuff in then really good stuff out and it's not just what goes in here, it's what goes in here. A lot of times it's what we're listening to is big too. Oh yeah, bro. The last couple of weeks of our season, uh, landscaping, my diet went to shit. I was just eating whatever, super stressed out, yeah. not hydrating properly. And so we just finished our season and I've spent the last two and a half weeks eating nothing but extremely healthy alkaline foods, organic vegetables, detoxing, lots of juice cleanse. <laughs> and, and I'm doing a juice cleanse and all that stuff. And I just meditated for about 20 minutes and I, I literally watched my energy and my consciousness do a 180 and I'm like, oh, I'm back to where I know who I am. I actually lost 10 pounds in the past three weeks. Awesome. Just by going more alkaline. Now, uh, the reason I'm talking about this is because you meditate regularly and with all the confusion and so much going on in the world, if you're plugged into that, uh, what does meditation do for you and why should people listening, hey, give it a shot. How does that help you with your success and your focus and how yeah. do you meditate? What do you do? Totally. And I think everyone, like, I think the word meditation gets thrown around a lot. And, and for a lot of people, they think it's like sitting in this specific position, doing this specific thing. And I'm very loose when I come, when it comes to, to meditating, I listen to a lot of different kind of like guided audio meditations. You can just search YouTube for guided audio meditations. There's a billion of them on YouTube. Find one that you like, but you can listen to it when you're going for a 20 minute walk in nature, right? You don't have to like, I often find myself laying down and here's how I use it specifically. So I'm up most days by 4.30 or 5.30 in the morning. Uh, I get up and I get to work. I have breakfast kind of six, seven o'clock. And then I work, go for a, a walk in nature. I got a, like a two mile loop outside of my house that I can go hike um, kind of on a dirt trail, um, come back, have lunch. So that's the first half of my day, half of my day. That, that takes me to about noon, which is about eight hour workday roughly. So I'm starting to feel tired at that point in the day. I've done a lot. I've got a lot of ideas flowing through my head. I've kind of executed on a lot of different parts of my business. Cause as an entrepreneur, you're like part bookkeeper, you're part marketer, you're part right customer support, like manager. There, there's all these different hats we have to wear. So somewhere around one 30, two 30 in the afternoon, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit, um, tired, a little sluggish. I used to go for a, another cup of coffee at that point. Uh, coffee is probably my one cheat thing that I still love. Um, I used to go for coffee at that point in the day, but I don't like that now because it keeps me up too late. Um, that's when I go for my meditation and I'll go in, I'll lay down, I'll pop on an, a guided audio meditation and I'll just kind of like disappear for like 30 minutes. Usually it's 20 to 30 minutes. And I just, I don't sleep. I don't allow myself to sleep. I just lay there and listen. And I just focus on my breathing and my mind wanders. Like I've been meditating every day for like 10 years. My mind still wanders. Like your mind is always going to wander when you meditate. There's no like magical place that you get to where like things change. Meditation is the practice of allowing your mind to wander, observing it, letting that be okay. And then returning back to just calm to breathing to listening to the audio track that's a lot of why i listen to guided audio meditations because they actually kind of like give my brain something to follow um but it's like it's like rebooting a computer is probably the the best way to explain it if you've ever had your your browser open with 15 tabs running and you got your your photoshop open and your video editing and the computer is just sluggish it's like what are you doing to me that's how i feel and you reboot the computer you come back boom you're ready so then i have this whole evening work session I'll work I go for a second hike most days when the weather's good do dinner um, I mean what is Friday night 6 30 local time and we're recording this right now um, I try to work till like seven or eight o'clock at night so like I said I, I feel like I'm behind in a race but that that's more of a function of my my niche and, and what I'm trying to do in this world and the fact that I got two separate businesses I'm running um, but that's that's about how I use it right there nice it sounds like you're honoring uh, circadian and all trading rhythms yeah 
And then, and then mixing in through those, I eat really clean on all of those meals, right? So I, I try to really make sure that like uh, the morning is gonna be like oatmeal or something really simple for my body to digest, a lot of salads during the midday, um, light dinners in the evenings. And what it does is I give myself little bits of energy through the food I consume, and then I go expend energy throughout my day through the, the kind of morning and afternoon walks. And it, it, is, it is about trying to find that rhythm. Everything in our world has rhythms. The, the tides ebb and flow, the moon gets, it waxes and wanes, like everything, the, the sunspot cycles, right? Like everything has rhythms and that means that you have rhythms, right? And I have rhythms and my rhythms are very different than yours and very different than all the other listeners. And it's, it's kind of about, you know, finding what yours are and then honoring them. That can be a really powerful thing to do in life. Hey man, you just made me think uh, on Instagram, I saw you like hiking. It looked like a desert and rocks and you got like this Jeep and it was, what's up yeah. with that, dude? I yeah, want to do so, that. Yeah. We built up a, a Jeep. Um, you know, it's just a camping machine. It's got a, like a pop top uh, tent on top of it. I got a fridge out the back. I got kind of like a, a full kitchen set up out of the back of the Jeep. We pretty much lived in and on the Jeep for about three months straight on a, about a 6,000 mile road trip. And um, here in, in Arizona, there's a lot of really cool trails to go four wheeling. And, and sometimes I can four wheel into a hike spot that none of the tourists get to because the town I'm in is pretty, pretty touristy. Um, so it's my way of getting a little bit farther uh, into the, the mountains and the trails than, than most of the tourists know. So it sounds like you're living life on your terms and you're, you're totally a go-getter. You're focused, you know what you want, you're up early and you're crushing it. Now, what about for the guy who has maybe an excuse coming through his head, even myself, uh, that's just bombarded with so many fucking distractions to the point where uh, it could be overwhelming. And I'm sure even with the success you're having that you're creating, you have a lot of requests from a lot of people. How do you, what is your tactic or did you have to let it overrun you till you got to the point where you said, I'm putting my foot down. How do you, you know, how do you yeah. stay focused and stay on your mission despite uh, all the different energies trying to, you know, pull you off and distract you? How do yeah. you do that? Well, I think it's important for me to kind of mention that when Melanie and I co founded this website that we're still running today back in 09, um, I had run out of rent money. I was all in on a, a business model, a business like a me too marketing scam thing. Um, literally couldn't even afford rent. Had to move back in with my parents. Uh, had to go get day jobs. So what we've built came out of extreme challenge and frustration. And I believe that like grit and resourcefulness, like that's it. That's the real it factor. And like, how do you get to that point where you're motivated to do more than you ever thought you could do before? Because that's where I'm at right now. Like literally, I'm doing more, I'm accomplishing more, I'm creating more value and more lives than I ever thought was possible. And to think that it came out of actually a very dark place, um, like literally like 30 years old, I had promised my wife, I got this entrepreneur thing, yeah, marry me, I got you covered, my newlywed, had to move back in with my parents, they had a tiny ass 1100 square foot house, my dad was retired, walking around all day every day, it was horrible. But out of that, I found a new gear. Out of that, I found, and sometimes disgust can be an incredibly powerful, motivating emotion. So that's where I found that willingness to do whatever it took. Like waking up at 4.30, I worked for three or four hours on the internet business before going to the day job, got homework for three or four hours afterwards. Every Saturday, every Sunday, I said no to every happy hour, said no to every barbecue. I missed birthdays. I missed everything because I was grinding because my burning desire to create a better reality for myself and my wife was the, the motivating factor and that motivating thing. Uh, Napoleon Hill talks about that in his book, Think and Grow Rich. If you haven't listened to it or heard it, grab it on Audible. I think it's in the public domain. You might be able to find it for free on Gutenberg. Um, get the book. It's like a $9 book, tops. Um, brilliant, brilliant book. So, so that's, that's kind of where it started from. Now, where I'm at now, money is no longer the motivating force. I've got the money I need. Like I've got a lot of comfort. And, and comfort can often be the enemy to growth. Comfort can often be, uh, what is it? My friend says, uh, luxury breeds complacency, right? Like if you're good and that's the problem with a lot of people who want to start a job, but they're working, in, they want to start a business, but they're working in a job and the job pays enough. They live a comfortable life. They go to the same office. It's easy. Why would you go from that to like extreme challenge of becoming an entrepreneur 
it usually takes some sort of motivating factor. So at this point, I use a very big why. I have a very big goal in my mind. And it comes back to what we kind of talked about earlier, the, the creating micro economies. I want to help 10,000 people create a little micro economy in their community. And this micro economy is going to support their family. It's going to support their like inner circle, but it also supports the people at the farmer's market. And it supports all those little local businesses. I'm huge on local business. I spend a lot of money with local businesses every opportunity I get. Um, I try not to go shop on the amazon.com to keep it here locally type thing. And so helping all of these people. Now, when I wake up, I'm like, I got this audience of people who are looking to me to guide them on the path of creating their own economy. And that's a way that I've been able to find to get leverage on myself. And it's usually like you've got your goals up top and the goals will change. Goals start kind of like self-focus, right? Like I got to fire my boss. I got to make X a month to cover my bills. But once you get to a point, there's been studies like happiness from like $70,000 per year to like a million dollars per year income. Happiness does not go up significantly, but from like zero a year to $70,000 a year, happiness goes up massively. So once you get over that hump, you actually need to kind of learn how to play against yourself in a new world because you actually do create a whole new world at that point. I think it's about having a big vision, a big why. I mean, what drives you, man? Like you're, you're driven, like you, you have your, your real business. You've got your YouTube channel that you've been growing forever. You've got your blueprint series that you put together. You've got your marketing seminar that you put together. Like, like what drives you, right? Like it's, it's crazy how much stuff you're putting out in this world. I'm curious. I want, I want your answer now. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, for me, at first, if you look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, uh, it was to get out of an emergency situation. It was like, I call it like being in the jaws of a lion or, or Satan or whatever way you want to put Back it. up against the wall. You had no other option. You had to find a new, a new level. Yeah, I'm fascinated by personal like transformation in your side when you have this connection. Like imagine like your back's against a wall and you're in fear. And then when something clicks that it turns into courage. Yep. And you're like, all right, like David and Goliath time. When you yep. get that feeling that comes and then you can take the first step, that's when this enthusiasm, it's it like, you know what I mean? That's, yep. but the interesting thing for me, and I'm, I'm hanging on every word you're saying right now is, is because I felt like I was drowning and I finally got on the shore, right? Got some financial stability in my life, got a business structured and set up. And then when I got onto the shore, I'm, I'm actually, I'm kind of stuck in the middle living my life saying, Oh, I don't want to go back there, but it's stagnating my own growth because now I'm like, Oh, I'm on the sand. I've never yeah. experienced this. Right? right. So to get to the next level now, and, and you talked about that, it creates this whole new ecosystem where you're facing yourself in a different way. So yeah. what I'm doing is these kind of 90 day sprints where I'll go through, I'll go for a goal. But by the time I'm done, I actually fall into this lull. It's like an exhaustion. I'm coming through this right now and coming out and about to go on another sprint. But um, so yeah, that's that's where I'm at. I think that uh, I, I've learned a lot in 2018. And what I learned the most thing is if you have if you have too many irons in the fire, your attention is spread in too many directions. And then second is if you if you try to become successful just based off of willpower and hard work without having any systems or protocols in place, like slowing down a bit, building the system, and then using it as a, as a leverage point, right? If you, if you just try working your ass off, you, you're just gonna end up totally burned out, right? Yeah, totally. Because like, like the grind, we have to grind at some point, but then we have to elevate our game, and to elevate the game, you have to either build a system or put a teammate or put something in place to, to handle that so you can elevate to the next level because there's always, there's always a further. Um, and, and one thing you mentioned, there's that, that saying, uh, what the man who chases two rabbits catches none, yeah. right? Like that focus thing, right? You got to focus in on one thing and, and do one thing. Great. So I think, um, one thing I've been working on recently is I brought on an advertising guy and that was a very difficult thing for me to let go of. I've, I've passionately been engaged in Facebook ads for four plus years. Like I said, I spent a couple hundred thousand dollars of my own money. Um, now I've got a guy who I trust and, and he's running the ads my way and he's, he's actually doing more than I ever did. He's giving it more attention. He's more detailed. So it's, it's almost like this thing that I was, I was reluctant to let go of because it was such a core and, and there was so much cash outflow and it was, it was a kind of a big deal. But now that it's out of my hands, I'm freed up to do my next level stuff. I'm creating even higher quality, more valuable stuff. And then that's actually getting better done 
getting done better than I was doing it on my own. Wait, wait, dude, I got a question for you. This is yeah. perfect right now. And for you guys listening. So we're talking about level one business where you do it all yourself. Level two, yeah. you hire some people, but you're still in there doing it. Level three is when you're completely, you're just like the visionary. There's level four, which is totally different. But so when I hired and I took your advice and, and I hired three virtual assistants, I had four at one point and I hired a secretary, right? And I got employees. It made me realize that I was doing so much busy work that I felt like I had purpose doing. And then actually I was like, well, I got all these people doing all this stuff. Now what? And right. I, I'm still having uh, some issues readjusting to that. Yeah. How, do you, how do you adjust to that? So like, I love the game of marketing, of direct response marketing. Um, I still study the, the oh, direct wait, mail wait, guys. Wait. And it's, it's doing a bunch of busy work. Now, how do you point your direction so you're consistently creating results? Like, okay, keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's like your number one job as an entrepreneur is to get money, right? Like you need to make sure, and that's like all those employees are 100% depending on you. And this is another way that a lot of people are able to get leverage on themselves is what we'll do for ourselves is often like that much. But when it's like you got like seven or eight employees and you know all their families and you know how many little chillins that they got collected right between them all, like that might be the leverage that you need to keep grinding and hustling. And that's where just becoming a great entrepreneur really is. Um, that's the game, right? And it's, it's systems to bring in the sales. And a lot of times doing more sales calls, how do you get more inbound calls, doing that Google My Business stuff, learning Google AdWords to get on the AdWords as well, figuring out how to get that, keep that phone ringing and then getting better at closing people and doing those deals. And at some point, bring on that salesperson who could do that even better than you. And always kind of scanning, like what's that next best opportunity? Um, I usually keep my finger on the pulse of where things are going. Um, I'm doing a lot of Facebook advertising right now, for example, but um, I know the direction Facebook's going. Facebook is, is being extremely challenged as a social network. I doubt I will be as uh, bullish on Facebook as an advertising medium in three years. So I'm already um, testing ads in new areas. I'm already testing funnels in new areas. I'm already working out those other things. Pinterest is one of the places uh, that I'm, I'm really actually quite focused on right now. And I think it's a great place for a lot of um, physical businesses too. Uh, anybody who does rehabs or kitchen remodels, like boy, uh, the lady who makes the decisions in the house, she's looking on Pinterest at night on her tablet. She's pinning new kitchen ideas and new countertop colors to her boards. And she may very well be a $50,000 client. It's kind of a side note there. Um, but I'm, this is, and I love the game of marketing. I really do believe believe that what my wife does, which is we create a type of angel meditation that is for a very unique segment of our world. Uh, most people don't know what it is or wouldn't understand if they heard it. Um, but there's this group of people who love what she does and it makes them feel extremely good. Hey, I'm going to lie. I downloaded that angel meditation that you talked about in a video from your wife made. It was dope, dude. Nice. Um, nice. <laughs> and then, so then I've got my brand that's built around helping small businesses. Like our audiences motivate us. Right. And I'm like nonstop. We're thinking about how can we help these people improve their lives? Sometimes it's creating a new course for them. Sometimes it's creating, uh, um, a community for them, a forum or a, a private Facebook group that we allow people in to help them or, or offering some coaching, but right. It's, it's, it's so variant at what those next steps can be. And sometimes what we start and we do sucks. And we're like, that sucked. I didn't, I don't want to do that anymore. So we iterate and we change and we try something else and we test something else. But, um, it's always, as I free up more of my time through systems, through automations and through people and teammates, I know that that time has been freed up because I can go now create a greater impact in this world for those two audiences that, that we work on. Um, that's maybe a personal philosophy, but I've tried the whole like, um, Oh, I got my money coming in. I'm just going to go hang on a hammock at a beach in Costa Rica and drink beer. And like, uh, I got bored. I literally got like day two. I was like, all right, this is fucking boring. Come on. Well, let's go, let's go create something. Like I think we are all here on earth to create things and to create, um, smiles, uh, positive experiences in the lives of others. And so I'm relentlessly focused on how can I do that? Sometimes it's increasing the, the size of the pool of people we're helping. Other times it's increasing the depth of what we're helping people with. Um, but that, that literally is my dominant thought. Like, um, how can I be of service to my audience today is something I ask myself every single day, every single day. And, that, and 
when you ask yourself a question, your brain's like, oh, you can go do this. Huh. Okay. That's beautiful. Uh, I've been kind of studying and I'm a bookworm. The most uh, successful entrepreneurs are the ones that become customer focused or customer obsessed. Yeah. So that brings me to the next thing I want to ask you. You know, we're going to wrap up here in a couple of minutes, but uh, consuming content. Mm -hmm. Talk about that, dude. Consuming content. Where are you on that page? And what? Yeah. The big key as for anybody doing internet marketing or growing a business on your own, you got to be creating and publishing more than you're consuming, no doubt. There's, a, there's so much noise, right? There's, we, we were in the information age for a while. The information age is dead. We're now in the attention age and your attention is the most valuable thing and where your attention goes, where your energy goes, that's what you're creating in your life. So being very, very hyper aware as to what you are consuming, but always focusing on publishing and creating more great content, publishing and creating more than you're consuming, especially for digital entrepreneurs. Anybody trying to grow an internet-based business, the rabbit hole of YouTube, even my videos, it goes deep. Like you could spend months doing nothing but consuming ideas. And when you're consuming ideas, you're like trying to understand how the puzzle fits, right? You're like, okay, so like I could start a window cleaning business and it could be like this. And then I could add on like that service to it. And you're like, I just don't get, maybe I can watch another video. Maybe that's how it'll all make sense, but it doesn't. So maybe I'll watch another video. That's how, no, you know how it all makes sense. You go out and sell a fucking job, right? And then you show up and you do the job and you get paid or you don't get paid. And you're like, oh shit, I learned that. Get paid first, right? Or, you know, and then you go sell another job and then you go bid another job and you bid this one lower, you bid that one higher. And it's, you're never going to learn how any game works through studying it from the outside. It's through going through it is really, truly where you learn it. You just got to get off your ass and start bidding jobs, start like throwing up the Craigslist ads. I got one dude. I don't know if you ever saw him in the comments. Um, Jay Barnum, the seven figure moving Academy gets a shout out. Um, hope I got his name right. But like he, he was like, he had to move back in with his parents. He was like 40 and he didn't even have internet. And he was like, I have a truck. I can move people. So he goes down to his local library and he runs a freaking Craigslist ad from the local library. Call me. I'll move you. Dude runs a seven figure moving business now. And he was like out of pure desperation. Like I have a truck. I can move people's shit from point A to point B. Good. And literally over, I mean, it's been 10 years and, and, and an unlimited number of hey, heartaches look, and headaches to get there. And that's awesome. A couple of people are probably listening right now. Go, I should start a moving business. You know, but like, it's like whatever is in your DNA, whatever you love, whatever you be cool with. But like, even if you ain't doing nothing right now and you just watching videos, listen to stuff, like go, go try something, go, go offer to cut somebody's grass, like anything. There's so many ways for you to add value to the lives of others. And there's this huge ocean of an economy around you. Trillions of dollars pass hands all around you all day, every day. And all you need to do is position yourself in between a need that somebody has or a want that they have and like doing that shit for them. Because nobody wants to do, like we all want the results, but we don't want to do it, right? Like the lady wants the really nice curb appeal, but she doesn't want to be out there for six hours making it look pretty. Bingo, there's your opportunity, right? And it's, yeah. it's doing that you actually learn it, not from watching it. Now, this is this is important to ask, and I want to ask you, because I, I'm a fan of a guy named Eben Pagan. You know who he is? And he said something to me one time. He goes, when you're mauling over information, when you're consuming content, he goes, what we're looking for is an epiphany. We're waiting... And he has some deeper stuff where he talks about you might get four or five of these epiphany paradigm changing like, oh my God, your whole life is changing that in that second where the, all these dots just connect. But we're looking for that, oh, that we're, and then we just right. go out and take action. Now, if somebody's kind of stuck in a law where they're stuck consuming content and they're just like, when is this thing going to come and activate me so I can go out like Maybe they're just stuck on the ledge. What happened for you? How do you kind of get over that? I'm not saying that you're like, you have every answer in the world, but you are in full-blown action mode. How do, how do you make that leap? It came out of that dark place for me, man. It came out of that disgust. Like I was just like literally looking in the mirror, like, man, I married this beautiful woman. I told her all these, like, like I hyped myself up on what we were going to create. Uh, had to move back in with the parents. I had $50,000 in student loan debt. Couldn't even afford rent. And I'm talking cheap ass rent. It was like really inexpensive rent that I couldn't afford. Like, like, why? like I just got like mad at myself and somehow like calling myself out and having that moment of like, who, what, like this ain't, you, there is more to you. You can do more in this world. Like step the fuck up. And like, I had to have that heart to heart with myself 
And then I did. And then I started, I just started taking steps. I didn't even know what steps to take, but I was like, I'm just going to take steps. We're going to build, we're going to build something. We're going to start. Boom. One step. Okay. Boom. What's that next thing to do? I'll go do that next thing. Cool. Okay. Well that happened. What's the next thing? Okay. There's that next thing. What's the next thing? Boom. Still to this day, I'm like, what's that next thing? Boom. Like that's now, it. Right. You told me, uh, you and your wife, you, uh, uh, are on the same page. You guys sat down and you told me like you kind of have this financial plan. You're great stewards of your money. You're like, well, let's not increase yep. lifestyle. Let's pay off all our student loans. Let's get really, 100%. can you talk a little bit about that of how you are a great steward of money and how you respect it and how you use it as a tool? Yeah. Well, money is energy. Money is stored energy, right? It's actually technically nothing. Um, they're, they're instruments of debt. Like if you really learn what like, and it's actually currency, not money, gold would be considered a money uh, currency. Like, like literally at its philosophical, philosophical roots, this stuff right here on my billfold is actually nothing. It's linen with inks and dead presidents on it. But we all believe that it's something and it's actually ultimately energy. It's a representation of the value and the energy I've helped and given to other people. So as with everything we've talked about, energy management is everything, right? So if we learn how to manage this type of energy, just like if you learn how to manage your, your life energy throughout your day, you'll have more energy at the end of your day. So when I learn to manage this energy here, I'm focused on making sure that I got enough of that energy when I get to the end of this life. And I don't know if I'm gonna be 95, I don't know if I'll make it 104, 114, 70. I don't know, but I'm going to be ready for it. And I'm going to play my energy management game now. And I do fully believe that when we are proving that we're good stewards of money and finances, we make more of it and more comes in. And I don't think I shared this one with you. So a course I went through a long time ago, it's on Audible. It's called Prosperity Consciousness by Frederick Lehrman, I believe. Now it's like, it's an old 90 Gale Conant tape series from the 90s. Super relevant today. It's like a $48 retail, but if you're on their credit system, you can get it for a credit. You can buy credits for 15 bucks. You get your first one free. So if you're listening and you ain't never downloaded an Audible, you can get this $50 course for free. Frederick Lehrman, Prosperity Consciousness. Anyways, like nine years ago, Melanie and I are driving from the Bay Area where I grew up to Albuquerque where we met and we listened to this thing. He had all kinds of affirmations and he just talked about money and energy. He just talked about things in a unique way and he taught this five bank account system where you got your, like there's just each bank account has a specific purpose. Every time you make money, you go put it into the different accounts and different accounts have different things. There's long-term savings, there's this, that, the other, blah, blah, blah. But when his whole bit was when you prove that you can manage your money, even if you're making like 800 bucks a month and you barely have enough, run it through the system and eventually it'll grow and you'll just become a better steward of money. So I forgot that I had listened to that. And that's why I hadn't told you about it till right now. Uh, this past summer, I, it popped up on my Audible and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get that again. I downloaded it again. I listened to it. So many of my new neuro connections, my, my new affirmations, the way I think about the world, the way I think about being of service to others, it all stemmed from that course. And I totally forgot it had, it blew my mind to listen to it again. And honestly, uh, I think it's one of the most valuable courses I've ever been through. And it's, it's, it's super inexpensive, but like, we have to figure out this money game in this life. Uh, you can see, man, the markets are going crazy right now. The politicians are going crazy with where they're throwing money around this, that, the other. Like, not only do we need to learn how to create it, hence the microeconomy thing, but then we got to learn how to hold on to it. Not necessarily let it, how to get it to grow, like how to not fucking lose it. That's the key. Warren Buffett said, rule number one, don't lose your money. Rule number two, read rule number one, do not lose your money, right? So it's like, um, once you're growing it, and that's what I've seen so many digital entrepreneurs, I know a lot of entrepreneurs who make a lot of money. Um, one friend sold a business for like $160 million, he runs a VC fund, but I've seen many multimillionaires buy the Lambos, buy the nice big places, and they went flat broke, they had to go bankrupt. And then they had to try to do launches to try to pay for their $40,000 a month lifestyle, and they couldn't make those payments, and they literally had to go bankrupt. They went from being on top, actually went from zero to being on top, to right back down to zero. And I can tell you that place that they got to after falling from like being there, literally having Italian sports cars, that's a giant liability. Um, that's a tough hole to dig out of. That is a very tough hole to dig out of. So, so I got my Jeep. I love my Jeep. I got me a little turbo diesel Audi. It's about six years old. Gets like 50 miles of the gallon. I love that thing. Um, I'm into the real estate game. I'm protecting forest land. I got 20 acres of trees, a little bit of timber land that I'm protecting. Um, got, yeah, like assets, not liabilities, but, um, I don't know. I just kind of went on a rant there. Prosperity consciousness. There's my plug for that one. Yeah. Prosperity consciousness by who again? Frederick Lehrman, I believe, L-E-H-R-M-A-N, I believe it is. It's a Nightingale Conant 
audio and it's on audible. I'll make sure you get a link. It'll be in the show notes for sure. Okay. Prosperity Conscious Consciousness by Frederick Lehrman. And then uh, this is a little left field, but you put me up on like the hero's journey and like, you, yeah. you, dude, you, you told me about this book a year and a half ago, something great leads. Oh yeah. 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 Bro. And I, I, I went immediately and I bought it on Kindle and I read that whole book in two nights and it was like, boom, it was, it was incredible. Can you talk about that real quick? Yeah. Well, have you reread it yet? Uh, Cause no, the I'm second, the second read through, you'll see it from a different angle. You're like, Oh, so the book's called uh, great leads. It's a six ways to start any sales message. It was written by Michael Masterson, which is a pen name. He's actually named Michael Ford and he runs Agora publishing, which is the largest, uh, newsletter say it's like a publishing company. They do about a half billion dollars a year selling financial newsletters and selling all kinds of things through copywriting. That's, that's their key. Like they write these great sales letters and they sell, um, like Motley Fool type, like financial newsletters. So the book is just the six ways to start any sales message. And it's about playing into the conversations people are having in their minds. It's about the different angles you can take to capture their attention. Cause if your sales copy on your website sucks, right? So let's go back to that original thing. Um, the person's water heater blew up. They search Google, they find you, they click, they go to your website. If the words on that page do not convince them that you're trustworthy, that you can handle their problem, that you're the person to call, if it doesn't sell them, on choosing you and taking an action, which is calling you, they're going to hit back and they're going to go to the next website that will sell them. So that's where that book, and I think the copywriting skill is a, a brilliant skill for every business owner to ultimately learn. Um, but man, it's amazing what the difference in a few words and changing just a few words in your messaging can have to like the numbers throughout your entire business. Uh, it's what I do on Facebook. I do a lot of split testing, which I'm, I'm trying this headline versus that headline. And every once in a while you stumble on something that could literally double your response rate on an ad. And when you find that, uh, it can, it can be an absolute game changer for businesses. So it's a, it's a worthy skill to, to harness. Guys, listen to this so clearly right now, get the book, great leads, six ways to start any sales message by Michael Masterson, right? Yep. It's like nine bucks on okay. Kindle. It's amazing. You have to get this book, this uh, book on Kindle, read it. And there's this emergent kind of property in your brain when you study marketing long enough, like it goes, like you go, wow. So when a customer goes on Google or looks and looks on my website, or if they immediately, when they're reading it, they instantly get this, oh, I'm in, I'm absolutely in the right place and I don't need to go anywhere else now. Yep. Can you talk a little bit about that and then we'll finish up this show? Yeah. So it's, it's almost a little bit beyond that. I'm in the right place. It's like, this person gets me right. We're all walking around with conversations in our head. Everybody's thinking, and, and, and before you started listening to this, you looked at it, you're like Keith and miles. I don't know who this is. Is there any value in this for me? Is the thought you probably thought to yourself before you clicked, then you listen and you're like, ah, and then, then six minutes in, you're like, okay, these two are, they're like, uh, so they're off to a rocky start. Like, is there anything in this for me? And we're always constantly tuned in as humans to W I I F M. What's in it for me? It's an old Zig Ziglar quote. And Zig Ziglar is not only one of the greatest old school motivational speakers in the world, the dude sold pots and pans door to door in the 70s. And I'm talking about a tough sell, like literally door to door, dragging around pots and pans, selling it. And, and he came to that idea of every human being is tuned into WIIFM. So if your messaging on your advertisement, if your messaging on your website, doesn't connect that user with that conversation they're already having in their head, they're gonna think that this person doesn't get me. Now let me give you a, really, a real world example of how this plays out. So you're at a bar and you're hanging out, having a good time, and there is a girl there that looks hot, or if you're a guy, there's a, a girl, yeah, whatever. Or if you, anyways, <laughs> there, there's a, a person you find attractive there and you go up to them and you're like, you start talking about yourself. And you just stand there in front of them and you talk about yourself and I do this and I'm that and I'm great and I do this and I do that. That person's going to look at you after about 14 seconds and be like, dude, you're creepy. Like stop talking about yourself in the presence of me. But if you get into that conversation, if you engage them in a conversation and you actually hold a conversation with them, that is how potential relationships can form. And that's essentially what we have to translate and do digitally through our digital marketing in this day. They're having a conversation in their head. So many business owners go on their website and they say, I've been doing this for so many years. I fix this kind of problem. And the user who's reading it is tuned into what's in this for me. And you're talking about you and it just does not come 
compute. But when you literally get those words on the page to be kind of crafted in a way that meets them at, you're probably looking for a plumber and you're wondering if we, you know, 24 seven and that's, that's what we do for you type thing. And like, I'm, I'm kind of an abstraction on that example, but it's all about matching that conversation that they have going on in their head already. Um, everyone's thinking what's in it for me. I got this problem. We all got problems in our lives. We're trying to solve. We all got places we're trying to go. And if they can instantly observe that you're potentially able to help them solve that problem or achieve that goal, you become that trusted advisor for them. And when you get there and then you stay in touch, you're the one who gets the call for the second job, the third job, the fourth job, and so on. Or you get the five-year contract that turns out to be a $10,000 contract. Wow. Okay. That's that, that right there. That's it. Rewind the podcast, go back and listen to what he said. said he again. <laughs> because, because what he's talking about right there, that's an entire like 50 hour long conversation that you have to mull over. Like, and that, that's down. the key. And, and I really think that every business owner needs to become a marketer. You have to understand digital marketing. You really do have to understand the basics of copywriting. Um, it's not outsourceable. It's just not, I've tried, I've spent, I spent $12,000 on a sales letter um, and it was terrible. It didn't work. It was, it was off brand and we had to rewrite it. But, but now that we, and it took me six years plus to really understand this of, helping people achieve what they want and, and not talking about me, not talking about my product, talking about them, their problems, their world, their goals, what they're hoping for, the, the people who they tried and burned them before and, and, and really become an advocate for them, their goals, their mission. Uh, that's, that's what everybody wants. Everybody wants somebody who can encourage them, who's going to help them, who's going to be able to be trustworthy. Um, just language patternings, man. When we get it right, it just clicks. Oh. So good, man. The customers don't want you. They just want a result. They want a result. Right. They don't want a gardener. They don't want a landscaper. They don't want a window wash. They, they want a result. And the funny thing is like, we'll use window washing for a minute. Like they actually don't want clean windows. They want what clean windows make them feel. It's a status symbol. They're the kind of person who, when their friends come over, their windows are always clean. So they actually want the emotional benefit of impressing their friends who stop by when they randomly stop by. And that's actually what you're selling as a window cleaner. It's that kind of abstract shit that like, it takes, it, it's deep to get into that abstraction. But I think you mentioned Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You really got to get to that core understanding of why these people want what they want. Status Status is a big time thing, uh, like yard work, all that. It actually is status because you want to be that person in the neighborhood, not that person. And everybody knows that person in the neighborhood, like, God damn, got a lawnmower, right? But you want to be that person in the neighborhood where it's all prim and tidy. And that's actually what they're buying from you is that, that feeling of status of being better than their neighbors, which is kind of crazy to say. You can't use those exact words on your webpage, but, but you can elude to that by, um, want to have the best looking yard on the block? Ooh, that might be the words that make them say, uh-huh, because that's exactly what they're thinking. They're like, man, I just want, I want the best looking yard on the block. And they go to your website and it's like, want the best looking yard on the block? You're like, yep, cool. I'm in the right place. I'm going to call this guy. The Dang. best looking yard on the block on autopilot or something where like a service where the customer Hands doesn't free. even have to think about it. It just automatically deducts out of yep. their bank account. Every and month. then you have to test it. We can come up with these great ideas that we think are going to work. And then you put it out in the world and flop, you know, like it's happened to me so many times I've had, Oh my God, this is going to be the one. Oh, this is gonna be the best product ever. Sell like five of them spent like three months on something I made like 150 bucks on, but then other things we kind of put together all, I don't want to say haphazardly, but um, we didn't fully, expect them to do what they did, you know, 50 grand, 60 grand type launch stuff, just out like, where the fuck did that come from? Um, so I've been wow. humbled by thinking I know what I'm doing uh, enough times to, you gotta test it out there in the real world. That's it, final question, and then we're out. You actually, do you take the time or do you schedule the time to shut everything off and then actually recap and look at the data? How do you build that into your schedule so you can actually look and see what's working and what isn't it's yeah like so going like blind you know you know i really picked up that habit when i was paying for advertising right so when i when we were doing everything was based on the content 
we published our blog posts, our blog posts brought in traffic from Google. I wasn't extremely meticulous because we were just so focused on you keep feeding the machine more content and you get the traffic. So like my YouTube channel right now, I'm not paying for anything on my YouTube channel. I just feed the machine great videos. I just keep putting out great videos and YouTube keeps bringing me more people. So I'm not super focused on the metrics at all. But when you, when we, when we bust out my life energy, my stored energy, and I start paying a grand a month, five grand a month on paid advertising, I am incredibly meticulous as to if I'm putting a grand out, how much is coming back? How long is it going to take me to get a return on said investment? So the first four years of our business, I, I was very haphazard with, with data analysis. And, and now as I've, I've moved into to spending, because you have to know if that advertising medium is worth your time and energy, right? Like running a, if you put an ad in the, the thrifty nickel that gets put out to everybody in a zip code, like how are you ever going to measure if that actually returns? You can, you can send them a specific URL. You could potentially measure how many sales come in from the thrifty nickel and then compare it with your Google advertising. And I spent a thousand in Google ads that brought me four customers. I spent $250 on a thrifty nickel. It brought me zero. Perfect. No more thrifty nickel. All that money goes to Google. Or you might find vice versa is true. And so it was when I started putting money on the line, um, I played a lot of poker, man. And you need to be observant of what's going on at a poker table uh, or else, you know, if you don't know who the patsy is at the table, it's you. Uh, so I, I really think it was when I started paying for traffic is when that, that kicked up to the next level. Oh God, I got to have you on the show again. Cause yeah, man, I'm all about it. I'm all about it. Uh, back in, uh, I turned $87 on Facebook uh, and Instagram ads into $11,500, but it was, it was a hot market. It was the perfect timing. It was the perfect message and everything was lined up. That's and awesome. then I go and I spent um, $700 on Facebook and Instagram ads over the period of a month. And then I, it turned it into like $300, like yeah. I lost money. And I'm like, and, and I'm nowhere near at the level of spending at you are probably spent a few hundred bucks a month on, on ad spend. But it's like, that's, that's a whole nother conversation. So yeah, it is. And I'm happy to come back on, man. Have me on. Uh, I'm happy to share. I love this stuff, like literally. And I really do want to help the listener, you. I want to help you build your business. You can build a business based on systems. Man, if you have a local service business, please go to google.com forward slash business. Fill that out. Go verify the postcard. Like get your address in the foot of your website. That literally might be enough to bring you in two, three, four more clients in the next couple of months. Um, it's, it's amazing. Like Google wants to help connect you to your people. So, so just do those little things that they're looking for. You'd be amazed at what comes out of it. Yeah, amazing show. Everybody go back and please listen to it again. There's tons of nuts and bolts and gold here. Go to Miles Beckler's YouTube channel and tell everybody where they can find you in your own words. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm the only Miles Beckler in the world. So literally you search it. I'm around. I'm not very social, uh, but I'm, I'm on like, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to say hi. That sounded really weird. I, I don't do much on Facebook, Instagram, but uh, pop in a YouTube comment, say what's up. I'm, I'm around. Just search Miles Beckler and I'm happy to. What's your Instagram handle? Miles Beckler. Also. See, there you go. Yep. Easy All right, man. Dude, it was great having you on the Untrapped Podcast, Cheers. Miles. Thank you Thanks so much, man. All right. Peace out. Later.